Okay, hi there. Here's another video, this look, this time looking at renewable and non-renewable resources, also called finite resources. Exam boards in the new syllabus expect students have a nice clear understanding of the difference between the two. So first of all, let's take a look at non-renewable or finite resources. These resources are finite in supply. A good examples, crude oil, coal, natural gas, fossil fuels, etc. Uh, there's no obvious mechanism at the moment to replenish those resources, although obviously we can discover new reserves. The rate of extraction of a finite resource depends in part on the market price. So, for example, if the price of oil globally is high, one might expect to see an increase in the current rate of extraction from countries such as Saudi Arabia, Nigeria and Russia. Clearly, of course, um, there is an ever-increasing population globally and there's a significant threat to the natural finite resources of the planet. So renewable resources are replaceable, providing, and this is key, that the rate of extraction, the pace of extraction, is less than, if you like, the natural rate at which a, a resource renews itself. So solar power, tidal power, oxygen, biomass, classic examples, fish stocks and forestry also, of course, uh, providing affordable, Reliable and sustainable energy is a key part of not just the UK, but many of the country's energy policies. Uh, the percentage of renewable resources, for example, that have contributed to UK electricity has grown to about 20% in 2014. Here's an interesting chart showing the percentage share of UK electricity generation that's been met by solar and coal. Of course, coal has been in long-term decline in recent times. This is a short-term chart showing uh, uh, where solar power now eclipsing coal production. The UK has committed itself to a binding European Union target that 15% of our energy consumption should be sourced from renewables. And that requires about 30% of electricity in the UK to come from renewable sources. Uh, this chart shows the growth of renewable electricity generation in terms of gigawatt hours up to and including 2016. Um, many of you will be familiar with, with hydro and, um, and solar voltaics, solar panels and things, wind and wave and tidal. Bioenergy is shown there, and that is significant. That is energy from landfill gas, uh, from things like sewage, sludge digestion, um, things like animal biomass, plant biomass, anaerobic digestion and so forth. So renewable energy increasing in the UK, which is significant. And it looks as if 2017 might well have become a tipping point for renewable energy, not just in the UK, but in many other countries as well, including emerging countries such as India. Indeed, in May 2017, on a particular Friday, uh, nearly one quarter of the electricity in the UK generated here came from solar power. That broke, that broke the previous record. Indeed, solar power in May 2017 generated more power than nuclear energy and that's despite the government basically taking away a lot of subsidies from the, from the renewable sector. Coal accounted for less than 2% of power generated and here's another article on this issue from the economist Linda Yu. So there's some quite significant things happening in terms of the renewable energy sector in the UK and that's true also, also in many other nations including developed countries such as Germany and Denmark and emerging countries such as China and India. So it's important to have a distinction between renewable and non-renewable resources, and hopefully this video, this short video, has helped you find that difference.